1873, the Adelaide Jail held both male and female prisoners. Female prisoners were mostly there for the crimes of theft, prostitution and drunkenness. One of the most fascinating cases at the jail, of course, is the trial and execution of Elizabeth Walcock. Elizabeth is the only female, unfortunate enough, to have been found guilty of murder and then suffered execution afterwards. I've uh, studied the case of Elizabeth Walcott for uh, a number of years, but uh, yes, it's um, quite a, a sad story in that uh, at the age of seven, she was severely beaten, strangled and uh, raped by a passerby. Uh, many years later, after uh, surviving the death of her father, she heard that her uh, mother was still alive and living in um, uh, South Australia, up at Moonda. And uh, Elizabeth uh, then decided to move back to um, Moonda. The job that she eventually got, which was for Thomas Woolcock, a widower. Her um, stepfather, he thought it wasn't uh, seemingly appropriate for a uh, girl of 18 to be working for a uh, widowed man. So um, he threatened to break her legs and uh, cripple her if she didn't give up the position. So she went to Thomas uh, Woolcock, told him what had transpired and he, after giving it some thought, he asked her to marry him. And in her own words, uh, Elizabeth said, she um, would marry him, uh, despite her stepfather. The marriage, because it was one of more convenience than anything, it, uh, they did have some arguments. Thomas, uh, in uh, 1873, took uh, severely ill. Uh, a few weeks later, Thomas uh, died. Thomas Walcock uh, met his death from poisoning administered by Elizabeth Walcock. The inquest was held in Moonta and the inquest jury returned a finding that Elizabeth was guilty of murdering her husband and she would then have been taken to Wallaroo Jail and then transferred to Adelaide Jail pending her trial in the Supreme Court in Adelaide. Elizabeth didn't have a fair trial as we uh, would define a fair trial today. She was represented by a Dr Kaufman who was a newly trained lawyer from London. The prosecutor was the Crown Prosecutor, Mr Richard Andrews QC. She wasn't permitted to speak on her, on her own behalf and her defence counsel didn't call any witnesses for the defence. The only witnesses that were called in the case were witnesses for the prosecution. Now in 1873, of course, it was also an all-male jury. And so it's likely there would have been some bias towards a woman who was accused of murdering her husband. Mr Justice Waring was visibly affected when he had to sentence uh, Elizabeth to death. The death sentence was the only sentence available to him under the law at the time once the jury had delivered a, a verdict of guilty. Other females have been found guilty of murder but then they've all uh, been awarded mercy. Unfortunately in, in Elizabeth's case that didn't happen. Since her death, there have been many, many sightings at the jail of her ghost. One of the more famous ghost stories about Elizabeth um, was um, or occurred in Yard 3. A tour guide who was taking a ghost tour 
um, had separated from her tour because there was another tour guide with her. He had taken his tour group off and she had wandered off into yard three to do some photography. And out of the corner of her eye, she catches a movement and as she looks up, she can see a figure standing up on the far end of the balcony there. She knows that this is impossible because this particular cell block is all locked up and the public, um, in fact even the tour guides can't get there without using a key to get into it. As she's looked up uh, at this figure, the figure is looking directly back down at her. She comes to her senses and decides that she's going to take some photographs of this um, and as she lifts her camera and is about to shoot, Elizabeth then turns her back very, very slowly and walks off and as she's walking off, she just disappears into the ether. The tour guide is uh, obviously quite amazed about all this and thinks, well, no one's going to believe when I go back into Yard 2 and tell them this story that I've just seen Elizabeth's ghost. Um, but fortunately um, for her, a woman from the tour guide had actually come in and was standing directly behind her. She didn't know this at the time. And as Elizabeth had disappeared, she goes, did you see that? The transcript of what was actually said in court follows. Elizabeth Walcock, you have been found guilty after a lengthened and most careful inquiry of the awful crime of murder. It is now my duty to pass sentence upon you. The jury have recommended to you mercy on account of your youth, and that will be my duty to forward that recommendation to His Excellency the Governor, in whose hands the prerogative of mercy is reposed by our most gracious Sovereign the Queen. I have now only the solemn duty to perform of pronouncing the sentence of the court, which is that you be taken from the place from whence you were bought and there hanged by the neck until you are dead. I have to fix a date for your execution, which will take place on Tuesday, December the 30th. I express no opinion as to the recommendation of the jury. In the event of your sentence of the court being carried out, May the Lord have mercy upon your soul.